Hello everyone, this is Brad with Cat Ed. This week's video is all about pattern on a path. So let's take a look at how we can use this powerful command. So pattern on a path is one of those commands that's really useful when you want to have something like uh, repeat along a path. So for example, like a toothed belt. So that's the example I'm gonna show uh, today. So I'm gonna start by just creating a quick sketch, um, a couple circles that, that kind of defines the belt. So let's just do maybe like a, a six inch circle and maybe a smaller circle over here. Let's do like a four inch circle. And I'm gonna make uh, those horizontal with each other. So I'm gonna use the horizontal constraint and let's dimension those to be a certain distance apart. Let's just make those uh, 10 inches apart in this case. And then I'm gonna do a smaller circle up here. Let's just make it uh, two inches in diameter. And again, um, to fully constrain this, I'll go ahead and dimension um, that circle to be four inches tall um, from the origin. And um, let's just say um, five inches across like so. And then I want to kind of connect um, these circles with some lines. So here's one of the bonus tips. I want to have a line that's tangent to these and I could use the tangent constraint, but if I'm in the line command and if I just click and hold my left mouse button, you'll notice that the tangent constraint is being created automatically. So I'm still holding down my left mouse button and then all I have to do is get near this other circle and I'm just gonna keep moving until I see that other tangent icon appear. And you can kind of see it sort of snap right there and that's that tangent icon. And now I have a tangent line between these two circles. I'll do the same thing here. I'm just gonna click and hold and you can see the tangent line. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna keep moving until I see that tangent icon appear. So it's a really fast way to create a tangent line between two circles. I find it much faster and much easier than using the tangent constraint. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use the trim command um, I used the T key, the, the T shortcut command. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim these circles here. And you can kind of see the overall outline that we're going to use. This is kind of the shape of the belt. And I want to give it some thickness. So I'm going to go ahead and offset this line. I'm gonna drag it to the outside and let's just make it like an eighth of an inch in thickness, so 0.125. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish my sketch. And we can see that all the lines are, are black. Uh, that means it's fully constrained. We can see that little lock symbol means it's fully constrained. Okay, I'll go ahead and select that profile, right mouse click and say extrude. And let's go ahead and set our distance um, let's just make it like a 0.5 in depth. So we just created this belt right here. I'll go ahead and create another sketch to define the tooth. So I'm gonna select that front face, right mouse click and say create sketch. Then I'll click on the rectangle command and I'm gonna use this three point rectangle because there's not really a horizontal um, line on here anymore, but there is this angular line and you'll notice if I get near it, it kind of snaps to it. And if I kind of move back here, it's gonna catch that tangent point where it's tangent to this arc right here. And I'm gonna basically say that's gonna be my, my zero point or my starting point. So I'm gonna click there. Let's go ahead and zoom up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna move along this line and I'm just gonna click there. And now as I move up, you can kind of see it's creating my rectangle along that line. I'm just gonna click somewhere to kind of finish the shape of that rectangle. Now I wanna define this with some dimensions. 
So let's say that the overall width is going to be, um, let's say, 0.125. And the same with the overall height. So I'm going to go ahead and specify the overall height to be 0.125 also. Now I want to have this uh, be rounded over. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it the edges here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that corner there. And let's just do like point, um, 0.05. And I'll do the same thing over here. And hit OK. And we've just kind of defined the shape of the tooth. OK, we'll select the profile, right mouse click, and say Extrude. I'm going to start to drag to kind of define the direction. Now I could type in a dimension, but I always like to say instead of going a distance, let's say go to an object. Now I want it to go to the back face, and I could rotate the part around, but here's another one of those bonus tips. If I just hover over where I think the face is and click and hold my left mouse button for about a second, it's going to kind of probe through. So the first thing I'm going to hit is that top face. And then if I come down here, you can kind of see it highlighting that back face. And so if I select that, it highlighted that back face. You can kind of see it right there. So it's a really quick way of selecting a face that you can't see, and I didn't have to rotate around to select it. Okay, so there is, and we're gonna go ahead and say join, so there's the tooth right there. So we're, now we're ready to do the pattern on a path. And if I go into the create menu, under pattern, you can see pattern on a path. Now I'm going to do a couple things before we run this command because actually let me go ahead and run it so you can see what it's going to ask for and you'll see why um, we're going to back up here a little bit. But I'm going to say pattern on a path and it's asking for a couple things. So it's asking what is the object type and it's asking for either bodies, faces, features, or components. Well I want to pattern a feature. And we're actually going to pattern this extrude feature, this last extrude that we did. Then it's asking for the path. So I'm going to go ahead and select the path. And I'm going to select this, this edge right here. And now you can see it kind of opens up the dialog and it gives us a lot of options. I'm going to start to drag and you can kind of see it's showing us a little preview of what this looks like. So the first thing it's asking for is what's the quantity, and then it's asking for the distance. So let's go ahead and increase the quantity. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go pretty substantial. I'm going to say 30, and let's start dragging this distance. And so you, now you can see there's 30 of them. And as I continue to drag, you're going to see it's going to go along this path. However, we're going to see something weird happen. So you can kind of see it's keeping the shape going the same direction as it's going around this path. And that has to do with this orientation. And you'll notice it says identical. If I change that to path direction, now you can see how it's rotating each of those individual teeth in the direction of the path, which makes sense. That's what we want in this case. So you have two different options. You can have it so it, it keeps the same orientation as it goes around, or you can have it rotate and follow the path as it goes around. Now, the other thing it's asking for is what is the total distance that we want this to go along? And you'll, you'll notice right now it says 19. As I continue dragging around, you can see that that number increases. Well, I don't know what the total distance is. And we need to know that before um, we can run this command because we don't want to guess. We want to be very exact, okay? So I'm going to cancel out and I'm going to show you a neat little trick. 
I'm actually going to edit my original sketch. So I'm going to come back to my original sketch here. And if I go to the inspect menu and I just click on measure and I click inside this boundary, I'm just going to click right here. You'll notice it says the area, but then it also says loop length. And what that is, this, this edge right here, or all of these edges, is the loop. And so it's saying the total length of all of these edges is 36.933. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that to copy it into my clipboard. So I'm going to click right there, and it just copy that into my clipboard. Now here's another trick that I use that I find very handy. I'm going to come into my modify menu and go into change parameters because I want to record this number. I, I'm, I'm probably going to forget it really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and say change parameters and I'm going to create a new parameter. I'm just going to call it loop length. And then what's the expression? I'm just going to paste that in there. So I just did a control V and I'm just pasting that into the expression. And I now have a user parameter called loop length, and it has that distance in there. I'll go ahead and say OK. And now we can reference that parameter. Let's go back into our um, pattern on a path. Now that we kind of know what to expect, so we're going to do features. The feature is going to be that extrude feature. What's the path? We're going to select this as the path. I like to start to drag just to kind of visually see what it's going to look like. Um, let's do let's do like 60 teeth in this case. You know, start to drag around. We can kind of see that that doesn't look like the way we want it to. So I'm going to change that to path direction. And then for the distance, I'm going to come in here and start typing in loop length. And sure enough, you can see it right there. I'll go ahead and select it. And you can see how it grabbed whatever the loop length was and it put it in there for us automatically. So kind of a neat little trick. Instead of having to remember or having to type in that number, um, we can just reference it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, one more thing I want to point out is sometimes, depending on the quantity, you might get a warning message saying there's you know too many instances. Um, for example, like there we go. If it was defaulted to like adjust, for example, you might get this warning: too many pattern instances. Consider using optimized or identical. So I think by default it's set to adjust. So I came in here and I'm just going to say, let's go to identical. And then you don't get that warning message. It's just a different way of how it calculates or computes the solve. So I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. And we now have that one tooth patterned all the way around on that path. And what's nice about this is if we were to come back and make a change uh, to, for example, if we were going to change this radius to be something smaller, like let's just say 0 0.02, finish my sketch, it actually updates that all the way along the pattern, for example. And if I were to come back and change the original um, path, so here you can see this is what our original path was. It was 10 inches. Let's go ahead and change that to be like 15 inches. So we just changed the overall length. Now watch what happens when I say finish sketch. Okay, the number of, you know, the teeth don't go all the way around. Why is that? Well, that's because the total length is different now, right? Well, we can come in here, do that exact same thing. We're going to measure that area there. It tells me what the loop length is. I'm going to click to copy that. We'll come in here and say change the parameter. Paste this in here like so. Say OK. 
finish our sketch and everything updates accordingly because the pattern on a path is referencing the total distance is referencing that loop length and that's why I like using that parameter. So hopefully you found that video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. And also make sure you like and subscribe. Here's some other videos you might find useful. See you next time.